this video explains in simple terms the five biggest projects affecting Nairobi and Kenya in 2025 and why they matter to ordinary people. Before we begin, a short note. If you watch these videos often, thank you, thank you for being here. If you are new, welcome. Today, I will come down from number five to number one. I will explain the basics of each project, who is building it, when it began, how much it cost, how far long it is, the problems it has faced, and what it means for you and the country. I will also show how some projects feed into others, especially around the big sporting event and the push to move people more safely and faster around Nairobi and the country. Let us start with number five. Kenyatta Avenue Gong Road Viaduct. This project is a viaduct along Kenyatta Avenue and the Gong Road connection in Nairobi. It aims to reduce traffic congestion in the central business district by creating a direct elevated route connecting key junctions and by reorganizing how traffic enters the city. The project has been presented as part of the wider effort to reduce inner city gridlock and make it easier for people to get back to work and to local markets. So who is carrying the work? The viaduct and related civil works have been associated with contractors who have handled other large projects in the country. The China Road and Bridge Corporation, CRBC. In recent public reports, the works are described as ongoing and meant to be completed in phases over the next two years. The project is reported as costing around 3 billion fillings. Completion dates mentioned by authorities are about mid-2027 for some sections. Why it is ranked number 5 by impact? The Kenyatta Avenue Gong Road Viaduct is important, but it mainly helps people who move into and out of the central business district. This means it affects mainly daily commuters, market traders, and public transport users, but does not change long distance travel and national trade routes. That is why its impact is important, but more local when compared to the bigger projects in this list. The verdict will be useful if it is paired with better traffic management and safe pedestrian routes. Often, this elevated system works best when local businesses and pedestrian walkways are also improved so that people can safely leave a bus and reach their destination. If the city coordinates the viaduct with bus routes and tax stands, the public will feel the benefit quickly. Number four, Gong Road flyover construction. The Mong Road flyover at the Junction Mall area is a large fallen flyover meant to ease one of Nairobi's busiest corridors. The work began around September 2024 and is funded by a loan from a Spanish fund. The estimated cost is just under 4 billion shillings. The project includes the flyover structure, improved junctions and walkways for pedestrians. Authorities have said the project may open in 2027 and have reported high rates of construction progress. For example, reports of reaching about 80 to 90 percent for some civil elements in late 2025. Why it is number four by impact? Long Road is one of the busiest roads leading to and from Nairobi. Many daily commuters, traders, and public transport users rely on it. That makes the flyover important for people who travel every day. 
It also ties closely to the Talanta Stadium project and upcoming AFCOM event because roads like Gong Road will carry fans, teams, and traffic during large sports tournaments. Upgrading this corridor will help traffic flow and reduce delays during big events. That link to sport and daily use is why it ranks high on the impact list. The work has caused some local disruptions, such as temporary road closures and changes to bus stops. There are also no more concerns about how well the contractor will finish on time and the costs that come with traffic diversion. While the government and the Kenya Urban Roads Authority have been public about the scope and funding. Number three. Green Park Terminus Pedestrian Underpass. The Green Park Terminus Pedestrian Underpass is a major project near the Elaselase Avenue and Hu Highway Junction. It is designed as a pedestrian network of about 500 meters that will help allow people to cross a busy junction safely and connect to bus and train services. The project cost is reported at about 2 billion shillings and as of late 2025, officials have said their works are about 97% complete that it may open soon. Why it is number three by impact? This underpass serves tens of thousands of pedestrians every day. For people who walk to work, to market, to buses, it will reduce the risk of accidents and cut the time spent crossing chaotic junctions. It also improves access to public transport hubs and supports other projects that move people around the city. Even though the underpass is almost complete, there have been serious criticisms. Some lawmakers and civil society members have raised concerns about the design. They have pointed to small lip sizes, lack of proper ramps for people with disabilities, and questions about safety and lighting once the underpass opens. Parliamentary committees even halted the commissioning at a point to demand changes and improvement. People also point to past underpasses and some flyovers like the UON underpass that did not receive constant maintenance, which later fell into disuse or insecurity. These examples show that a project can be built and still fail to meet public expectations if there are no follow-up on maintenance and security. That context is important because a well-built underpass can deliver huge benefit, but a poorly managed one can be a public disappointment. If the Green Park underpass opens and it is managed well, daily life for many will improve. People will cross the road safely, children will get to school with less risk, and commuters will move faster between transport modes. But the concerns about design and security are real. The lessons from past projects must be applied so that the space stays clean, safe, and truly useful for everyone. Number two, Talanta Stadium construction. Talanta Stadium is a new large stadium being built as part of Kenya's preparation to co-host the Africa Cup of Nations in 2027. It is being built as part of a broader Talanta Sports City concept that includes training grounds and supporting facilities. The project is large both in scale and cost. Funding for the stadium has used innovative financing approaches, including an infrastructure asset backed security listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange and other funding instruments. The posts show the project raised a significant amount, over 44 billion shillings in structured finance. And in late 2027, the works were reported to be about 61% complete, with major structural works largely done. The stadium was expected to cost 
thousands of fans and to be one of the venues for the AFCON 2027 matches. Why it is number two by impost? Sporting events have a unique power to deliver short-term and long-term benefits. For AFCOM 2027, large crowds will travel to and use the stadium. That means roads, public transport, and nearby services will be tested and upgraded. Planter Stadium is not only a venue for matches, it is a reason to improve surrounding transport, security, and hospitality services. In that way, it becomes a driver of broader infrastructure change, not only a facility for sports. Planter plans are linked to other national efforts. For example, the Bombers of Kenya program and the investment in national railway lanes aim to move people and delegations more smoothly between venues and accommodation facilities or sites. The stadium is equated to benefit from improved rail and road links that are planned or been discussed to ensure fans can travel quickly to matches. When Atlanta opens and when the transport links are working, the benefit will be limited to match days. The stadium can create jobs, attract events, and support local businesses for years. The stadium construction has moved fast relative to its size and the government has been keen to show progress ahead of AFCOM deadline. That has increased public confidence that Kenya can deliver for the tournament. However, large projects have risk, cost overruns, quality control, and time pressures can cause issues. The public will watch how the the stadium was finished, how the supporting facilities are delivered, and how well transport security are managed for big events. If all parts work together, the public stands to benefit hugely on both events, event days, and on normal days when the stadium hosts other events. Number one, Rory to Mouse Summit Highway. Upgrade. The Royal to Mount Summit upgrade is a long highway upgrade that will link Rony Nairobi to the Mount Summit area and on the Nakuru corridor. The entire upgrade is hundreds of kilometers and has been described as a major gateway to Western Kenya. The project was highlighted in late 2025 and is estimated at a very large scale with features such as 170 billion shillings measured as the project value in some reports. The upgrade seeks to improve safety, reduce travel times, and open up palm and trade areas for faster movement of goods. Officials flood off machinery and former work in late 2025 even as some contractual and financing arrangements were being finalized. This shows that the country is being pushed hard to begin moving the project to construction. Why is it number one by impact? This highway will affect many people than any single local road or stadium. It will open new markets for farmers speed cargo movement between Nairobi and the western and northern regions and reduce cost of businesses that rely on road freight. Because it connects a major agricultural and urban hub, it supports job creation, lowers the price of goods and improves access to services. For millions of Kenya, it will matter not just for daily commerce, but for the economy of entire regions. The Lonnie Mouse Summit project is big and complex. Some parts are starting with machinery on the ground, while others, other aspects such as final contract terms were still being confirmed. That raises no more questions about timelines and the exact speed delivery. The value shown in some reports is high, and that means careful oversight is 
critical to avoid waste and to ensure the public benefits. When highways of this scale are built well, they become engines of economic growth. When they are mismanaged, they become waste resources. That is why transparency, quality checks, and clear timelines will matter for this project. Thank you for watching until the end. To my regular viewers, thank you for your support for keeping this conversation alive. To anyone who is here for the first time, I'm glad you joined us. If you want more videos about the best projects in Kenya and how they will affect travel and jobs, please subscribe and stay with us. There's more coming.